Okay, let's talk about cardiac troponin, what it is, how we measure it, and what do the results mean. So cardiac troponin is used as a marker of myocardial injury, i.e. an injury to the heart muscle or myocardium. Now, there are three types of troponin in humans. They're all part of the contractile apparatus of muscles. So the stuff that helps your muscles to contract. And in the human body, we've got skeletal muscle, which is in you know our extremities and are all around our body. And we've got cardiac muscle, which is very different. And that's only contained in the heart. Now of the three troponins that are in the body, troponin T, troponin I, and troponin C, the troponin C is the same in cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. So if you measure it, it's not going to tell you whether the injury that you've detected is in someone's skeletal muscle, like a bruise, for example, or to the cardiac muscle. However, we can measure the cardiac specific isoforms of cardiac troponin T and troponin I. So if we see an elevation of troponin T or troponin I, we can be pretty sure that there's injury to the heart muscle itself and not skeletal muscle. That makes it a really good biomarker of myocardial injury and myocardial infarction. So we can measure it. And it's the reference standard biomarker for myocardial infarction. It doesn't really matter whether you're measuring troponin T or troponin I. It matters more about the characteristics of the individual test, not which one of those two that you're actually measuring. Now, if we measure it, we're looking to see a rise or fall. So if we see that the levels go above the normal range, then we've detected a myocardial injury. But if those levels are kind of staying the same over time, that's not an acute injury. That's a chronic injury. That's something that's there all of the time. Whereas if the levels are changing over time, going up or going down, then it's consistent with an acute injury. Something has happened to the myocardium recently to have caused the troponin to shoot up and come down. A myocardial infarction is one of those things that can cause an acute injury. Now to diagnose a myocardial infarction, we need more than just a troponin test. We also need to know some other things. So we need to know, does the patient actually have symptoms that are compatible with a myocardial infarction? Or do they have ECG changes that are compatible with a myocardial infarction like ST depression or T wave inversion, for example. There are a few other things too, but they're the most relevant to us in the emergency setting. If we have the rise and fall of troponin and at least one of those other things, then we can diagnose a myocardial infarction. The next thing we've got to ask is what kind of myocardial infarction is this? Now, there are two kinds of myocardial infarction that are relevant to us in the acute setting or most relevant to us. The first is type one myocardial infarction, and that's the kind of classical myocardial infarction where nothing else has caused it other than probably an atherosclerotic plaque in the coronary arteries. And we know how to treat those myocardial infarctions. We give antiplatelets, we give other medications like statins, for example, beta blockers, and we can offer the patient coronary intervention to um, uh, to alleviate the stenosis in the coronary arteries. Type 2 myocardial infarction is slightly different. That's a myocardial infarction that's been caused by an imbalance in the supply and demand of oxygen to the heart muscle. So, for example, a patient with type 2 myocardial infarction might be unwell otherwise. You might expect them to have another condition that's apparent, like a gastrointestinal hemorrhage or sepsis, or perhaps they've got an arrhythmia like ventricular tachycardia or fast atrial fibrillation. And it's that other condition that's caused the injury to the heart muscle. Now, troponin can also be used to decide who hasn't had a myocardial infarction. In the past, we used to have to do two tests over a number of hours in the emergency department to decide whether there might be a, a rise of troponin occurring, and then we could confidently send the patients home. However, in recent years, and with better troponin tests becoming available, we've realized that if the patient has a really low level of troponin, well inside the normal range, and possibly even as low as the test can measure, then even early after symptom onset, 
we can be pretty confident that the diagnosis is not a myocardial infarction and we often don't need that second blood test. Sometimes the level is so high that we can be really confident in the appropriate clinical context that the diagnosis is a myocardial infarction and we can go on and treat it. We'll still do the second test in hospital to confirm the rise or fall, but we don't have much doubt about the diagnosis on arrival. Now in the ambulance setting, we won't have time to do two tests. So we're going to rely on detecting those really small levels of troponin so that we can be sure someone's not got a myocardial infarction or the really high levels of troponin so that we can be sure that they have 